feeling. I wonder what she was thinking. I wonder what memories might have come up that made her behave that way. That's an exam example. Those are examples of empathy. And then number eight, if you thought that those seven weren't enough, number eight is the capacity for morality, for actually thinking about the importance of compassion, of using your moral imagination to think about the larger social good and then enacting those behaviors even when you're alone. It's a way of defining morality. People with damage this area, they don't become immoral, they become amoral. They just don't consider this larger social good. Now those first eight, for me, started echoing in my mind as an attachment researcher, independent of brain studies with what we had proven secure attachment, healthy relationships between a parent and a child produce those first eight. We'd proven that, not knowing anything about the brain. So I was going, wow, that's really amazing. The ninth one no one ever looked for, this ninth factor of the middle prefrontal area is intuition. Being in touch with the wisdom of the body, the heart and the intestines have actual neural net processes around them, which allow energy and information to flow. It's kind of like little computers in your gut and your cardiac system that then bring the data up through this area of the spinal cord called lamina one. It comes up like in any you know, mammal, it comes up to our lower areas where they regulate the heart and intestines, but then it moves up to the area called the posterior insula in primates, and then forward only in humans. And if you're thinking about the interface between computers and humans, this is a really important area to think about. It allows, when it goes from the posterior insula, taking lamina one data from the body, including the viscera, the hollow organs like the heart and lungs, it takes this data moves it from the posterior insula to the anterior insula. And what we believe happens when that occurs only in humans is you create a representation of your representation of the body. It's called a re-representation. It keeps you one step removed. It's called introception, perceiving the interior world. And that function, amazingly enough, has been directly correlated not only with anterior insula activation naturally, but with the ability to have empathy the ability to have empathy, which is at the core of emotional and social intelligence. So we've now, in these years, bless you, we've now mapped out the actual circuitry that allows you to have these nine functions. And if you look at your hand model, lift your fingers up and bring them back down. What do you notice is unique about this area of the brain? Well, it touches everything, exactly. It touches everything. This middle prefrontal area is connected to the cortex. It's deeply connected to the limbic areas. It actually receives direct input from the brainstem. It's also through lamina one, receiving direct lamina one input from the body's whole system, the muscles, the joints, the teeth. So you feel sensual touch, you feel the internal state of the body through this lamina one movement, which goes directly to the middle prefrontal areas, not the back, to the front, which is just an amazing finding. And as we've pointed out, you're getting the data from other people's nervous systems through attunement and empathy. You're actually creating maps of other people's energy and information flow in their nervous systems. So the social, the somatic, the brainstem, the limbic, the cortical are all interconnected as one. What is so striking about that phenomenon is when you look deeply at the mathematics of that, what's that called, by the way, when you link differentiated parts? Integration. This is probably, uh, there's a few regions that are massively integrated, but this is one of the top tier integrators in the brain. It's not that the cells in this middle prefrontal cortex look any differently or they're not really different in their structure. It's not like they're super special cells that are going to special schools or something like that. It's their anatomical location that bridges with one synapse connections. Obviously the whole brain is interconnected. Yeah, that's true. But you're talking about speed of conduction with myelinated fibers that are 100 times faster than unmyelinated ones and with one synapse shopping you have basically connected the whole shebang together. 
So it's massively integrated. And from mathematics, those of you who are in mathematics, what do you know about when a system can link differentiated components, when it can become integrated? What do we know about it? This is now straight from math. Well, let's take a choir example just briefly as an example. If you take a choir of 10 singers, right, 10 singers, and you have them, we have differentiation and we have linkage. Let's do first where they're not differentiated. You block differentiation. You have them just sing one note all at once. Ah, it goes on and on and on. Is there any, besides the overtones, but in general, there's no variation. It's not flexible, it's not adaptive. It's kind of dead and flat and rigid. That's one extreme. If we have what we can call a river of integration, one extreme is rigidity. In this case, you've blocked integration by impairing differentiation. Let's say you do the opposite. Let's say you take these 10 singers, have them close their ears, and have them belt out a song, any song they want, as loud as they can when you raise your hands. What would you hear? Cacophony. You'd hear chaos. And for those of you who are familiar with complexity theory, you know that when a system is not maximizing complexity, it goes either to rigidity on one end or to chaos on the other. What we're talking about is an interpretation of complexity theory that says, as this choir example would be, if we had the 10 singers up here and we said, sing a song, very often people will sing Amazing Grace. I can't sing, so I'm not going to do it for you. But if you had the choir, you can imagine them singing in what? How would they do it? Harmony. Harmony is a great word for integrated flow. Why? You're allowing the different singers to be differentiated in their voice and the octaves they attain, not octaves, the, um, what's it called? I'm not a singer. What's it called? Intervals. The intervals, thank you very much. They're varying their intervals, but they're linking with each other to sing Amazing Grace. So it's an example of an integrated flow, just to give you the few, we don't have singers up here, to give you the, the idea. This notion then says, and here's the proposal about a, a um, mental health. When I started reading about complexity theory and trying to understand why the middle prefrontal cortex might be so exquisitely important in creating the well-being not just of this woman who unfortunately had been hurt in the car accident and unfortunately so severely damaged there wasn't much recovery possible, but her family was also hurt because the integration, that is the linkage and differentiation in this family was impaired. Now luckily they could go through the grieving process understanding the mechanisms of the brain that wouldn't allow the mind of this mom to continue functioning as it did because the mind uses the brain to create itself and if the pathways aren't there the mind can't do it so the kids had to learn how to grieve the loss of a mother who was no longer there whose body was still present so they actually did well even though the mom couldn't recover much they grew up well, they understood what was going on, they could even begin to uh, try to take care of the mom in various ways. It's a long story, but they've done well. For our purposes, understanding the power of this part of the brain, even through the pain of that family, is to look at the power of integration. So take a look at this list in your head, or if you've written it down, of nine middle prefrontal functions. And how many of you think that that list of nine has a number of components that feel to you, just in your intuition, that this is probably a reasonable description of mental well-being. Let me see. Okay. Well, if you ask mental health practitioners, they jump all over this list and they say, my God, where'd you get this list? And I tell them, you know, from the clinical case, and they go, that's like a magnificent description for us of describing mental health. So here is the move from a description to a definition. What I'm going to propose to you, and this is in all of my different writings that Meng talked about, so it's, you can see the detailed analysis and the references to the science. This is just kind of the take home message and a, 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 a kind of an overview. The proposal I'm going to make to you is that a healthy mind emerges from integrated systems. Integration, very clearly defined as the linkage of differentiated parts, so that when you have a nervous system that's integrated, you get these nine functions. When you see relationships in a family that are integrated, 
you know, where people are honored for their differences, but linked, they want to, how are you doing, how are you doing, okay, you like vanilla ice cream, you like chocolate, fine, but let's go out for ice cream together. You know, that's a healthy, adaptive family. You get flexibility, adaptability, even a sense of coherence, if you look at the mathematics of coherence. It's a beautiful book by Thergard called Coherence and Thought and Action, which examines the equations beneath coherence. And these integrated systems get that, where they embed the ongoing variables that they're encountering into how they define the in and out group. And the system then moves through time by changing response to what it experiences. Different from a cohesive equation, which is rigid in how it's defining things, and it just doesn't change. You're either in or you're out, odd numbers out, even numbers in. Whatever the system is, it doesn't adapt. So we're talking about relationships and a brain as systems of energy information flow that when they're integrated, they can move in this adaptive way.